And to start the show this week, it is a return to South End on Sea Essex for our second report from the annual Water Sports Festival. Lots of spectators, as always, for this popular event on a day of sunny intervals and very warm temperatures. Our attentions focus on the OCR Powerboat Euro Tour. Eight rounds completed, three crucial ones remain. It's the last run out before the tour heads for the final two rounds in Gibraltar. Everyone who matters is here. Ian Mackman, number 55, surprised one or two in the previous round with his spectacular first ever win. Ian Blacken, number 14, has been up all night repairing a blown engine. And Steve Masterman, number 12, is searching for the early season form that's eluded him. In the points, Ian Sterling and his co-driver, A.D. Dickinson, sit on a comfortable lead. But a few illusions that the title chase has already done and dusted. I was expecting Bob to do well yesterday. Um, I think Bob's blown it now by um, not finishing yesterday. I think if he'd taken the win yesterday, I personally saw Bob as the biggest threat. Although Derek at the moment's lying second, Bob, um, as he's proved over the years, um, has always been there or thereabouts in the championship. And I think the only thing that's led him down this year really has been his machinery. I think if Bob had been in a decent boat this year, I think there's no question he would have taken the championship quite easily. Um, I see Bob as probably the best driver in OCR and has been for quite a while. Um, in terms of close opposition now, I think there's always the Rendells still, although they're hovering back in fourth at the moment. There's still Derek Basham, who he's going very well this year. Um, if he can keep everything together, I think Derek could be there. And of course there's Lee. And Lee this year, I think, has been the biggest surprise for everybody. The way he's got the boat going really well. And yesterday he proved that you know he's out there as quick as anybody. Uh, so, you know, there's still three or four that, you know, are the main challenge there. And um, we've just got to make sure that we get the results and let them do the catch up, um, which is the way we're looking at it at the moment. Not over yet, then, is it? Oh, no, by no means is over. Oh, no, we've still got a long way to go yet. Um, you know, I'm. I'm quite happy with the way things have gone. I would have liked a better result yesterday, but when you're not happy in the conditions, the last thing you want to do is push it too hard and then run the risk of doing something stupid. And, and I wasn't totally happy yesterday. Um, so we'll see what happens today. Indeed we will. It's the usual frenetic OCR rush to the first turn, boy. Mackman got there first in yesterday's round. And with 300 metres to go, he's the favourite for a repeat performance today. Once again, it's the best possible start for number 55. But almost the worst possible start for 15. Ian Sterling and A.D. Dickinson languishing here in eighth place. The best bit of any powerboat race is a start, and here, 25 boats travelling at over 70 miles an hour funnel into the tiny channel that leads to the first mark. Well, it was Mackman then, and still is, when they all arrive at the same spot one lap later. But this time, he's not alone. Brian Padell, number 13, is paying close attention and looking to improve on a season's best second place on Lake Windermere in round two. Not a vintage year for Padel and his new co-driver Damien Slack. Mechanical niggles means six in the championship for them. Not a fair reflection of theirs or the boat's potential. Number 70, Bashman Perry, on the other hand, have probably exceeded theirs and are in with a real shout when all the points are totted up at the end of the year. In the 1.3 litre class, the amicable Welsh duo, Mark Kirk and Christina Deacon need one more victory to grab the title. In the 2 litre division, a few years ago, Ian Blacker was in the same position. Nowadays, though, his appearances on the circuit are limited, and that's a pity. Elsewhere in the 1.3 litre division, Bob Hunt and Dave Leach are playing second best to Kirk and Deacon, with Phil Artis and Aaron Scott third, and a girl power crew, Julie Lewis and Tina Mitchell, in fourth. On to lap six, and at the expense of Padel, Basham is beginning to look championship winning material. He's into second place now and closing down Mackman by around two seconds a lap. 
Padel is suffering after that promising start. Second is now third. Then, to add to Sterling's problems, Basham slips Mackman and takes the lead. Mackman drops to fourth. Without a win in the championship so far, Basham knows he must win this one if the gap between himself and Sterling is to be turned over and give him a chance in the final two rounds. So, pressure is building with four laps still to go. Sterling and Dickinson have turned their early eighth place into six. But if they can improve on that and Basham wins, their 452 point lead will evaporate to just 97. Ahead of them, A2, Richard White and Mark Keithley add to Mackman's woes and stay on course to equal their season's best, a third at Tynmouth. Bob Baker, number 50, is fifth, but with two non-finishes in a disappointing year, his campaign is already over. Lee Moxham and Terry Morris, 17, are also waving goodbye to any chance of the championship crown. A tremendous season, but today a win was imperative to maintain a last-minute bid. However, bronze will still do very nicely, and that decision is far from decided. The search goes on here at the expense of Brian Padell. Padell, desperately defending his position with a sick motor, is eventually forced to submit. Moxham, now handily placed in fourth behind White, Blacker and Basham. The assault on Padell continues. Bob Baker also in with a shout on that bronze position, becomes the latest predator. No luck though for the winners at Ramsgate. 33, Matt Shepard and Julian Abbott join the ranks of spectators. In 1.3 litre, they're still lining up in their finished positions behind number 69, Kirk and Deacon. They will be the happiest of the four boats because victory will secure the title. Bob Hunt, 52, will be wondering why he didn't join the tour earlier. A first and the two seconds in three outings was championship winning material. The girls, 48, will finish third here and stay third in the rankings. Two laps to go. And Basham is still the front runner, but it's not Sterling who challenges his championship. This time, it's Blacker, skimming around the tiny circuit at almost 80 miles an hour. His bid for victory, however, comes too late in conditions that at best were always going to be tricky. In spite of their mid-race surge, Sterling and Dickinson fail to recover from a poor start. The twisty circuit makes overtaking difficult. And they take a championship denting sixth place. Leaving Basham and Perry with hopes high on their agenda when the tour wraps up in Gibraltar. They finish first in the ninth round of the OCR Euro Tour, six seconds ahead of Ian Blacker and Stuart Porter. With the best eight resorts only to count, it's a good day for the Devon crew. They close to within 97 points of their favourites. And with 400 points for a win and two races left, it's guaranteed a grandstand finish. They're beginning to look uh, favourites, Derek, or is that just a little premature? Uh, just a little. But Ian uh, Sterling's got quite a lead on us still. We needed a good result there and him to be further back, and that's worked out quite well. I don't know where he finished, but a little way back at least. Well, he's dropping points uh, today, and you didn't, though. Yeah, I said I'm not going to look at it until after today, and then we've only got two races to go in Gibraltar, and then I need to look at the points and see. Hopefully, it'll, the water will see what's over there. How do you feel about it? Can you win it? Yeah, we can win. Just depends on the water in Gibraltar and the points a little bit, but we shall see. Fingers crossed. <laughs>